Hi, everybody, and welcome along to another episode of UCAT Conference TV. I'm Colm Cronin from the Adventures in Advising podcast. And today, look, I am thrilled, delighted to be joined with certainly one of my inspirations, and I know an inspiration for many people involved in not just advising, but higher ed. Dr. Charlie Nutt, Executive Director of NACADA, welcome. Thank you so much, Colin. This is such an honor and, and joy to be a part of this and to also be a part of the UCAT um, LVSA conference. So um, welcome, everyone. I know you've enjoyed the conference and we'll look forward to the rest of the, the day. So just really appreciate the opportunity to be with you. Well, delighted that um, I suppose we will we'll come to the uh, award ceremony um, later on. But okay. um I think the opportunity to, to chat to Charlie Nutt is always a great one. And one of the things that, that's interesting is um, here we are, um, I'm, I'm in Ireland, you're in the, the US, UCAT, uh, the UK organization, LVSA, the Netherlands. This is, this is properly global. And, and a lot of that is down to Charlie Nutt. I know there are lots of other people involved, but you know, as the executive director, as the one with the vision, you know, you were one of the people in, who really wanted to, to make NACADA truly global. So I want to take you back to, to what sparked, like, was that an idea that you always had, like, even prior to becoming the executive director? Or how did that come about, Charlie? You know, it really, it really was just kind of a, a, a fluke in reality. Um, 2006, Joanne Huber from University of Texas, Austin, was president. And she got an email asking her to come to England, um, to Leeds, no, York, to York, um, to talk to the Personal Tutoring Association. Um, and it was the same exact time as her um, daughter, who was graduating from high school, was graduating. So Joanne sent it to me like she would normally do. And I just wrote the person back and said, thank you so very much. I'm so pleased. Um, Nakata doesn't do personal tutoring, we do advising. <laughs> and wrote it back and said, I'll send you some names of groups that I know, because I've been in education, do personal tutors, a totally different venue for us in the US. So I had this very nice email back from this person that said, no, those, those are the same things. And so um, we'd love for you to come and speak. So I thought, okay. So I went um, and met Penny um, Reed, first person I met was Penny Sheffield and there she was and we started talking and it became so clear after about the first probably 15 minutes in the conversation that everything we talk about in the U.S. is exactly the same across the world. Students are students. Student success is student success. It may look differently. It might be called something different. It might be um, organized differently. But it's all talking about student success. And that really is how it all began, is because once I realized that, I thought we need to be really looking across the globe at academic advising. Um, I think working with, with Penny, with Oscar, with the board, I think we, we um, made a really good decision. And that is that there's some other associations that have opened, a, you know, a, a a blank association in the UK and a and a blank association in, in wherever. And we really made the decision we were not in the business of opening Nakata sites. We were in the business of, of beginning to expand the vision of academic advising for the for the city, for the country, for the continent, wherever it may be, to help them move forward. So it was never a goal of opening Nakata sites. It was really to expand the advising profession and to focus on student success. And so that's really how it all began. And then took about four or five years later and UCAT began. Um, we then got Oscar to chair the, the Netherlands conference. And um, let's see, that was 2015 maybe, I don't remember the year, um, but Oscar never even heard of LVSA and he was in the Netherlands. So he would never even heard about them had it not been for this, he got connected. But the nice thing is we've now begun to see it blossom. You know, we have two um, associations now in South Africa. Um, we have uh, an association in Japan that just began. We have two in China. Um, there's a couple of, of 
of associations that are non-English speaking that are advising one in Italy and one in um, South America. We've made some connections with those, but, but the real beauty is how do we just reach out to advisors and talk about student success? If an association grows, wonderful, but if we just begin to connect people and connect them to each other and connect them to students, that's what this is all about. So it's really not about taking the Qatar global as much as it is taking the profession and student success globally. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to detour a little bit, but I, I'm really interested in something that you, you said, and it, it, it strikes me because it, it's a testament to you. You you got the email, you you write reply back, and then the person writes back say, "I'm no sorry, you you've misunderstood. They're the same." But you listened, and I think that's a testament to you. But can you? And I I I was fortunate when I interviewed you when Matt and I talked to you for the Adventures in Advising podcast. Talk a little bit about leadership, but you know. I, I think it would be interesting to delve into that. Talk to me about like your willingness to to be open to ideas and to push back, I suppose, a little bit. Well, you know, probably the best dean I ever had was someone that, that, that she was my advisor in, in college. And then she hired me at the, the first university college I taught at. And she was one of those who said, don't come to me with a problem, come with me with, with an idea and then just go with it. And so I kind of learned from her. And so there's been very little in my career, but particularly very little at Nakata that someone's brought to me that I've said no to. You know, I might say, let's go back and retreat it. Why don't you go back and work in a different way? But if someone cares enough to make this come forward and move the association forward, it's not my job to say no, it's my job to figure out how to make it work um, within that. And to make it be clear that it's about the association, it's about the profession, it's about the members. Um, it's not about me, it's not about the executive office, it's about moving the association forward. And so I think my goal is just to listen to good people and hear what they say and then find every way I can to make their ideas happen. Well, you're very good at that. and. Uh... <laughs> I think everybody has a story about, you know, uh, so, some idea that that began with a conversation with Charlie that grew into to something else because of your support and because of your belief in the individual to, to make it happen. I mean, you're you're the type of manager that says, right, you're you're going to drive this. What can I do to take obstacles out, out of the way? And I suppose that leads us into um, the UCAT LBSA um, award ceremony which took place earlier today and they ha ha I suppose unveiled an, a new award which is the the Charlie Nutt award and can can you talk to me a little bit about like when when you discovered that this was uh, going, to, going to come about? Um, it's probably been a month and a half maybe two months ago I got a message from Oscar and and David on WhatsApp that said, you have a few minutes, we can talk about something. And I thought, okay, what are they up to? You know, what, what can we do? Where can we move? So I just wrote back and said, sure, let's have a talk. And so I, I was really looking to see what new idea they had, where they wanted to go. And they started to talk about this award. And, and it's kind of like I said today, it, it takes a lot to make me mute. Um, it, it's, it's, um, it's one of the greatest honors I've ever had within that. Um, was very shocked about it. Um, it, it's very touching. It's very, it very means a whole lot to me. Um, it was really a great opportunity for us to begin to even think more about how to recognize people who don't always put themselves out there to be recognized. That's what I see this award about. Award about. Gavin is a perfect example. I mean, Gavin is hardworking. He's low key. But it's never been about Gavin. It's always been about the professors, always been about people. And so when they bought the award to me and said they want to do this, and we have the first recipient, Gavin, I really did say that that was Gavin done because I wrote, and they went, Charlie, and they started listing everything. And I went, that's Gavin because that's Gavin has never said a word to me about that. He's never said, oh, look what I'm doing. He's never put that out on Facebook. He's never, he's just doing those. And I think that's why he's such a perfect 
perfect person for this first award and a great way to really talk about that it's not about you. It's not about UCAT. It's not about LVSA. It's about students. And Gavin said it so clearly today, advising is connecting students with how to be successful. And what we do in Nakata and, L and UCAT and LVSA is connecting each other to then expand. I mean, the fact that they've got 20 advisors in Melbourne that are now part of this mentoring process that's happened quietly, kind of under the radar. Nobody's, I, I just am so impressed by that. So impressed by Gavin for doing it, but then really just so honored that that Oscar and, and David really wanted to see this move forward in my name. It meant a great deal to me. Well, uh, a, lo a lovely and, and a fitting honor. And uh, you also, of course, have a, a, a new Charlie Nutt pin. So uh, courtesy oh, yeah. of Matt, Matt, Matt. Just took it off by the jacket. I'm sorry. Yes, well, that's Matt Markin and, and Kevin Thomas. This uh, this retirement uh, tour, uh, you might you might keep it going for another while yet, Charlie. Who knows what else you you might maybe, collect? Maybe I could be share right and just go do this for ten more years or so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I think that would be fantastic. And I suppose just I'm in interested, like. Uh, you know, I, I know when, and it, it, it's slightly different, but I have obviously changed institutions. And I know when you're coming towards the end of your time at any institution, you, you reflect back, think on your, your time. For you, as as you come to, you know, the end of the full, you know, being full-time executive director, just interested in your thoughts about, you know, how advising has you know um developed and you know what your what your thinking is as, as we move in uh you know to hopefully a, a post-pandemic world um you know I'm, I'm i look at this a little differently than maybe some folks think i do in some ways um i have what i call what i think about it as as career segments <laughs> I taught high school for the first 12 years out in education. Um, then I was a, 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 a high school administrator. Um, I then went and talk, taught at a community college and there was a vice president at a community college for 20 years. And now I've been at Nakata for 20 years. So as I'm looking at retirement, I, I find myself not just looking at the past 20 years with Nakata, but I'm looking at the last 44 years um, because you know, there's lots of things that Facebook is good or bad. One thing I've enjoyed is, is connecting with all the students I taught way back in the 70s. And so, you know, an exciting bit about this October for the first time ever is the class of 1978, 79, and 80 are having their joint reunion to get everybody together. It's the first time I've ever been able to attend. So it's, it's looking back at all of those folks um, within that. But as far as with Nakata, um, you know, I got into advising totally because I went to a college to teach. And then the, the dean said, oh, you're going to advise. I had no idea what that was. And then tried to figure it out. And I was like most faculty. To me, it was, was registration. And all I was concerned about was, do I know the catalog? Do I know the database? Can I check students off? Can I be sure they get what, you know, that was all I really cared about. Um, until I had a young lady come in that, that wanted to be a nurse, who was having lots of problems. And after about an hour of talking to her and her crying and me crying, it really began that she had, she came in to drop math, but math was not at all why she came to see me. It was really about, she needed somebody to talk to. She needed somebody to build a relationship with. She needed to know there was somebody on that campus that it didn't matter what it was, I was the person she could come to. That was so much more than registration. That was so much more than scheduling. Um, when I got involved with Nakata, quite frankly, I didn't know there was such a thing as an advisor because I was a faculty member. So when I went to my first Nakata conference, which was 1980 something in Atlanta, Georgia, and I met these people that said they were advisors, I thought, well, what else do you teach? I went, no, we're just advisors. I thought, people do this full time because I had no idea because in Georgia, they're all faculty or back then they were. Um, so it really helped me begin to see that, that it's not just a teaching process,
but it's a teaching and learning process that advising is a part of as well as faculty. And how do we merge those together? So I think the beauty I've seen is that, at least in my understanding and what I've seen and then what I've seen in the association, is we really have moved past the concept of advising being a service and advising being clearly a part of the institutional mission and part of the teaching and learning of an institution. That's a big shift for advising to make. It also is taking advising, I think, out of the realm of it's got to be either academic affairs or student affairs. We all have to be involved. And so it's the one piece of the campus that I think touches every other aspect as well as the student. And so it's just a part of me that just you're a teacher, you're an advisor, you're an administrator. doesn't matter who you are. You're there for the students. And I think advising has really come to a, 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 a a place where it's not just seen as registration, it's not just seen as scheduling, but it's seen as a teaching and learning environment. And what do we want students to learn? We decide that. How do we teach it? We decide that. And then how do the students learn it? We help them figure out how to learn that and then grow with it. Um, it's also the way that I think we can continue to get students to understand the value of advising because it's no more just about getting a schedule. They're having to learn something. They're having to, to show you they know it. And then they're having to demonstrate they know it by moving forward and getting way past you because they're ready to move forward. So I think that's where I've seen advising go. Well, you you have had a big impact. I was talking to um, one of the LVSA members the, the other day and he, he describes himself fantastically. He says he's a teaching animal and he had never thought about advising and then he went along at, and uh, he saw Charlie Nutt do a presentation and Charlie Nutt talked about advising as teaching and it changed his worldview and now he is a uh, part of uh, LVSA so you you've definitely sown seeds Charlie you, you and they are they are sprouting and I suppose then just maybe um, as a uh, as as you move the you know into an, another segment, I think as you you said, any um, you know I'm sure there will be a ton of them, but uh, I'm always interested. You know I love I love stories. I, I'm I'm wondering about some some of your maybe some I obviously can't pick a favorite, but just some of your your favorite memories from your time as executive director. Oh gosh. Um... You know, I, I don't remember who it was at the award ceremony, and I, I, I can't remember who particularly said it. You know, I think the beauty of UCAT and, and LVSA and Nakata is moving advising forward. It is moving students forward. But so much of what we do is relationship with each other. And so, you know, I have most stories that I can probably say in public or on the screen about the joys of, of institutes and conferences and, and you know, visiting places like Carter and, and Australia and those types of, of experiences that have been just amazing within that. But it's all about the people. It's all about the, the connections that I've made. Um, it's all about the, the friends I've got, you know, the friends I have. Um, I think, um, You know, I, I, I came from a situation where I was the youngest of three. Um, I had a, a very severe hearing deficit as a child. I had a, a very severe um, speech impediment until I was probably in middle school, maybe. Um, and so it was, how do you keep from getting picked on? Because you talk funny or you can't hear, so you just use, the, you just use jokes and become the class clown. Um, and so in some ways, I just enjoy people and I enjoy those. I think the thing that, that folks don't always understand is that I don't see you as an advisor. I don't see you as someone that is in Ireland or UK. I see you as a friend. I see you as a colleague. I see you as someone that, you know, I may be gone in June, but you're not through with me. You know, you're still going to hear from me. I'm still going to be emailing you saying how things going or 
I'm ready to come back to Dublin. You ready to, to show me around? I mean, I've made I made such wonderful friends. So I think every story I have with friends in the association is always going to be important. Um, you know, we have we have lots of funny stories. We we have what's in the executive office. We have called the yellow book, and that's a a, a yellow notepad where every time we do something wrong, you, you you make a note. We all go back and laugh at it. Um, and and so we have all of these stories work with members and awards and all of those. But I think it really comes down to every time you go to a Nakata event, you're not just meeting new people, you're seeing friends, you're seeing colleagues, you're seeing people that are very important in your life that I don't think other, I know other associations or either even others don't always see that. Um, my sister who recently passed away, um, lots of people in the kind of knew because Pam came to lots of conferences with me. She went to lots of institutes with me. And she used to always say, these people are your friends. I would go, yeah. And she'd go, but I always thought they were just people you work with. And I went, no, these are my friends. And so a lot of people that knew Pam because of me, they had conversations, they had, they text, they had with Pam. I never even knew they had within that because it was just that friendship, that bond within those. So I think that's the real beauty is, is any story I tell is going to be around a person. It's going to be around a friendship. It's going to be around a, uh, it's going to be around the day that I put you and Matt together in Belgium. And I looked across the room and went, those two need to get together. And pull. so I mean, I will always remember that day. I remember being at that reception to see the two of you and thinking, oh, we need to pull them. Those are the things I'll remember. Those are the things I'll never forget because it's just seeing people grow and expand, but really just become such wonderful professionals because of the work. Well, does that mean then, um, you know, that we are going to see a, a Charlie Nutt world tour? Uh, and, uh, you know, ch ch could, could, no, this, could this be on the cards? I've got lots of places I need to go back and visit people. And now I got people to go and stay with. So I'm just gonna, yeah, I, I think you know I might, I need to come back to Dublin, and you know I, I used to always laugh at um, uh, Rhonda Baker and a few others who would go to a conference and then they would stay two or three days after just to get location and that type of thing. And I never really understood it because the conference world, I'd get back to work and go. Um, I now wish I'd done more of that. <laughs> because I, I would always leave go right back to work. So I got a lot more to do in Dublin. So mm -hmm. let's get ready. I'm going to be right. coming back. And, and you know, I, I want to go back to Carter. I'd love to go. I'd love to go back to Australia. And so, yeah, I've got lots of people I need to go visit. They don't know I'm coming yet, but I'm going to come. <laughs> uh, you will be welcomed with open arms, I have no doubt. But what I, what I think is we need, um, you know, that when bands go on tour and they have the tour T-shirts that has all the dates at the back, I think we need a Char Charlie, Charlie Goes On Tour T-shirt. Uh, and actually, do you know what? We might get, um, you, you, might, you might well get a show out of that. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you... I think so. What we could do is you could help get the, the sites lined up and the places that we could put on the t-shirt. <laughs> I, I think I think we could do that because it's funny. Um at the moment there's a new there's a new season of Last Chance You out. And I see that one of the I think it was Region 7 had one of the advisors from one of the previous se seasons. I think they could just do last chance you forget, like leave the football, <laughs> leave the basketball, and just last chance you advising. I think that would be its own show and would be fantastic to watch. I think it would be great to do. The major thing is just to see the folks again. I think that's I think that's what we'll do, Charlie. Charlie Dot, you are an absolute superstar. I want to thank you for taking the time to to chat to me uh, today. I know that the the UCAT members, the LVSA members, will be delighted. And uh, look, do, don't be a stranger. Keep in touch. Do not, and and please, everyone with UCAT and the LVSA, thank you so much for this amazing conference this week. It's been fantastic. David Gray, I don't know how all you do what you do, but we just so value what you do and Oscar, the town LVSA board. And then once again, thank you for the, the, the award. It means a great deal to me. And I know it means a great deal to, to, to Gavin and, and Colin, I'm going to have to just get with you and Matt. We just may have to make a visit around the world and see where people are. I, I think there's a, I think they genuinely think there's a show in that, Charlie. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much and, and take care of yourself.
Thanks, Charlie.